money. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Welcome back to another edition of Byro Sports Talk. I'm your host, Byro. Let's get started. So, first things I want to touch on. Uh, breaking the record last night by hitting two home runs. Aaron Judge is now the has hit the home run record for a American League rookie home run slugger. The old record was Mark McGuire at 49. Now, Aaron Judge is the sole possession of the record at 50. Uh, will he add to it with the remaining games left? Only time will tell. Um, some other news. Indians are still red hot. Uh, Carmelo Anthony is traded to OKC. And Justin Dwayne Wade is making it official. He's going to be part of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Lots, lots going on there. Uh, Let's just go ahead and talk about basketball real quick. I like the addition of Melo to OKC. Uh, they said Melo would be the starting power for it. However, I I almost want to switch Melo and Paul George. However, if Paul George needs to be the small forward, I understand. And if Carmelo would perform better against power forwards, I understand. With... The Dwayne Wade addition for the Cavs, it's no surprise. It was bound to happen. Everyone was talking about it. Uh, again, it's just how things go. Um, to football now, let's talk about a few things I was going to talk about anyways. Let's start with the London games. So the London games whew, started way back in 2007. Interesting enough, right? Um, that first game was the Giants versus the Dolphins. 13-10, Giants win. Now, why am I bringing up this game? Well, this past week, the Jaguars destroyed the Ravens 44-7. Now, their all-time record in London, which they have the most, is 5. And they're 3-2. and two. The stat that's more interesting is Blake Bortles' record. Now, Blake Bortles has a 3 and 1 record in London. Now, think about this for a second. This kid who everyone was ragging on, ragging on in the preseason and just before the season even began, everyone wanted to count him out. They came out this week, won 44 to 7. Impressive win. I can't stress enough, 44-7 against a good Ravens, well, debatable, good Ravens team. Ravens have good defense, obviously. They're de when their defense ain't stopping anyone, their offense can't get going. And Joe Flacco threw two interceptions, yeah. Anyways, back to the topic of Blake Bortles. I was very impressed with how he played in London. I... There's always been rumors because of the Sasha Khan connection of the Jacksonville Jaguars moving. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I would honestly prefer to... Well, I wouldn't mind moving that team. I wouldn't even mind expansions in the NFL. I, I do mind a little bit on the expansions. They have a good number of 16 on each side. I know, I think a minor league needs to be in play, just like what basketball and baseball is doing. Obviously for certain players, not all players. But I know it's hard for the... Ooh, sorry. Um, back to the NFL, though. This weekend we saw an unusual amount of protests this weekend. And... It's to show unity amongst the NFL owners and the players due to Trump calling him out. Now, yes, they have the right to protest. I'm one who, if I had to judge all these protests, I preferred to... I like the Cowboys where they kneeled before but stood strong together during the anthem. 
paid proper tribute to those in the military. However, the one that really bothered me a lot was the Steelers just not being out there. Now, why did it bother me? When I think of the pros, I think of them being out there, standing strong, supporting us after 9-11. Everyone was united, we were standing strong. And honestly, the fact that we're not at that point anymore so, so quickly is a little depressing to me. It's, they have their right. Don't get me wrong. They have their right to do what they do. I love the visuals after 9-11 when we finally had sports back that we all stood strong together. We all stand for the national anthem, paid our respects. And... Thus, that's why Charlie Villanueva, or, oh, sorry, it's not Charlie. I keep, it's, let me pull it up, pull his first name up real quick. It's Alejandro Villanueva, sorry. And I love that he took a stand. He stood for the national anthem outside the tunnel. Yes, there was people inside the tunnel doing the same thing, but again, it's the fact that he alone stood outside that kind of is frustrating to me. Why is it frustrating? Well, the Steelers have been one of those teams that you didn't see very many of these protesters on. And to see them all stay in the locker room is a little disheartening. However, again, I, ha I hate that I have to emphasize it so much, but they do have their right to be in the locker room. And I, right here on ABC News, the team owner even says, their actions were not a boycott of the anthem. Well, I know what the boycott is. The boycott is... They don't respect the president in place, which, sorry, he's the president. Yes, he, he makes comments that, you know, most people wouldn't say as president and therefore ruffle fe feathers. However, again, I know politics is a very touchy subject. Colin Kaepernick started this kneeling trend and now he's out of the league and players are frustrated with that. Players are just frustrated in general. And people in general are becoming frustrated. And for this short, serious talk, I have to, I side with those who say, I want to see the players stand for the national anthem. I do, it, again, it's because I remember that day coming back from an assembly, watching the towers fall on TV and trying to, and just feeling national sadness, I guess, or as if we were vulnerable finally. And now as an American seeing, well, a few days later as that small child, as I was a sixth grader, uh, it was, very important that I saw the players standing tall, players just being together, everyone ready to perform to give their best to keep our minds off of the tragedy that has happened a few days earlier. Now, to change topics, I don't want to dwell on something so down, so energy draining. I'm going to go into my fantasy football team. Yeah, that's probably not, not a good segue, but let's go ahead and do that. So, this past week, how did I do? Let's start with what I like to call the prestigious league because, once again, it's the league I've been in the longest. It's a pay-to-play league. But this league, the Astastic League, boy, if I wanted something ever, I want a tiebreaker in this league, and why? This week, I saw a tie. 
me versus my good friend Colton Short, we both had 94 and a half points. Now, don't get me wrong. It's, I understand. However, the thing I don't like, whoa, that's new to me. What just happened? Huh. <laughs> well, sorry everyone, I, I just realized my kicker is now on the IR, and I need a new kicker. But, back to the topic at hand, I really like my players. Uh, again, it was a weird thing to see, but having... Oh, don't do that. Go back on. There we go. Sorry. Again, I need to stay focused. Focusing on the task I have. So, Colton and I tied. However, this is a league that, surprisingly, does not have... A tiebreaker. Most leagues have a tiebreaker of their bench. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm just going to type it up while I'm thinking of it. And I'm sorry. I, I just want to type it up, get it out there. How? Okay. So again, this is a league. Prestigious, yada yada. So I tied him. Uh, the tiebreaker, which in most leagues would have been a the total points of the bench. If I look at the benches right now, uh, let's see. Those are starters. I don't care about the starters. What does the bench have? The bench. Colton's. No, my team. Sorry, my team had sixty-one point four bench points. His had 58.6. Okay. Well, at the time when I wrote things, I was not expecting Dak Prescott, who was on my bench, to have 24 points. I was expecting to lose, and I even said, I think Colton should get this win if we're tied because of a tiebreaker. Now, the thing that happened the worst thing happened is there was a stat correction. Now a lot of people don't notice stat corrections during the week. Uh, let's see, week three. Oh, ho, ho, that's a lie. Oh, that's a lie. And they're not going to, oh. So the week three stat correction. I entered this game with Colton before Dak Prescott. And before Michael, Cra actually it was before Michael Crabtree who got me half a point for his one reception. Now, I was up a half a point. Colton's players were done. Things were settled. Everything was done. How do I all of a sudden tie without a stat correction? Now, <laughs> oh boy. Trust me, this is a big what happened. So I don't know what happened where Colton gained this whole point. And I'm pretty sure it's with Alex Smith. I'm not going to I'm pretty sure it's Alex Smith. But we're tied and I move on. So this week, week 4, now that I know I'm entering with question marks at kicker, I'm entering with some other players like Kobe Fleener, who I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him. He did okay, but he's not, you know, awesome. <laughs> I'm entering a game where my 1-1-1, one, one, and one, I face the commissioner, Jordan Miller, keep calm and live McCaffrey. Ha, play on words. Now... The comparison of the two teams is pretty, pretty normal. Uh, he has Carson Wentz. He's been doing very well. Drew Brees is mine. I get the edge. 
Uh, Le'Veon Bell's been underperforming. Melvin Gordon's been relatively good. However, they give me the edge again, which debatable. Brandon Cooks, he's done okay, but Devontae Freeman's going to be the man for Atlanta. Uh, looking at the next guys, you have Golden Tate and Devontae Parker, uh, Demarius Thomas, Michael Crabtree for my team. They're he has the edges at the right receiver, except Thomas is supposed to do better than Tate. Questionable, in my opinion. Uh, moving on. Uh, the next one is the defenses. He has the edge with Jack, the Jaguars playing with the Jets. Ooh, and I need to probably change mine from the Giants to someone else. Um, again, my kicker's not even in, but... His kicker's Justin Tucker, and he's done okay. Right now, it's about a point difference, I'll say. It's point. It's 1.2, but I'll say a point. And it will change, obviously, once I get a kicker, once some other moves are made. Uh, looking at my team, I need to get some other guys in there, really. Some rotation like a Tara Cohen, he's a great beast right now for me, and he's just right on the bench. Uh, I would love to see some trading from my team, like get Frank Gore out of here, maybe package him with Dak Prescott, see what's out there, maybe try to get Greg Olson off the team. But we'll have to see some of the offers I've been getting have been lackluster. I'll admit they're a little lackluster, but... Because most of them are, I want Devontae Freeman, one of your top guys, and here's someone who's terrible in return. I mean, okay, but that doesn't, you have to think win-win in these situations of trades. Let's move on to another league. I feel like I'm talking forever on this league. So let's go to the Northwest Ohio League. So this league, let's talk about this last win I had. And yes, it was a win. 93 to 87. Now, it shocked me that I won. Why? Because I was down a decent chunk. I was like, eh, Dak Prescott, he could do good. He could. What does he do? He does good. He had 22 points. More than enough than I needed. And here I am. Now, looking at the schedule this week, I need something other than Kyle Rudolph. I don't trust him. Kelvin Benjamin is not going to do very well, so I'm going to get rid of him in the lineup. Jason Witten also had zero points. My tight ends in this league just don't look like they're going to do well. And that's typical. Let's go ahead and do that too. And it's about right. I'll leave it. But there's my team. They're ready to go. Uh, this week... I face the Bullet Club, I believe. J Money Bullet. Nope, Bubba J is who I face. Nice. So Bubba J, he's a 3-0 guy. There are only two left, which is Bubba J and J Money's Baylor Club. Now, at 2-1, and one, me and Travis Scott's Goosebumps are the only two at the 2-1, which there's a lot of 1-2s. And, and again, it's early... It's fine. I like what I'm seeing this week again. I have the I love having the projections on my side. Very rarely do they not work out in your favor, but by usually about week five, that's when it starts being a solid a very solid, sorry, way of estimating your team. Now, an intriguing league. The the Fantasy Football. Oh, man. The Fantasy Football League, I think, is what FFBL stands for. <laughs> now, I, I, this team's great. They are. The... If I go to the scoreboard, this past week, my team did what they finally needed to do. I destroyed the professional manslayer. 
Alicia Martin. Sorry. It was a 105 to 57 win. Now, what took me to the promised land? Well, let's go ahead and do the quick box score. I don't like the full in depth one for some reason. Let's go straight into it. So let's look. Jordan Howard, Odell Beckham Jr. Let's say they push, even though I had two points advantage. Okay. Eagles defense only got me a point. For Buccaneers defense, negative six, sadly. If she had Eli Manning and Jared Cook, we might be talking another story. However, the same thing could be said with my team. If I had Marcus Mariota and Robert Woods, could be destroying them. Now, the thing I noticed with this week was Michael Crabtree, who's been great, didn't perform. Ty Tyrell Williams has not performed. Now, do I think Robert Woods will? Maybe. Let's, let me check him out real quick. His stats are a little iffy. Jordan Matthews has been in yeah, a solid, not quite double digits. So let's go ahead and try. Oh, see, I just don't want to leave him per se. I think Woods would be a better suit in a sense. Now, let's focus again. I got a great team. They're 2-1. Uh, this week 4 matchup against a friend of mine, Jonathan Davretsky. I hope I say your last name right. But he's called the Pit of Despair Dilly Dilly. <laughs> that wasn't his name before, but I love that's what it's that's his team name now. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's a commercial for Bud Light. Uh, it's pretty much they say dilly dilly after things and <laughs> that's just awesome. Oh, uh, alright, so let's see how our teams compare though. So I'm looking at it right now. Very solid team I'm facing right now. It's a very, very, very solid. I can't say that. Let me say one more time, very solid team this week that I'm facing. Uh, so for his team, he has Phillip Rivers, who's supposed to do better than Alex Smith. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, who's supposed to do better than Jordan How Howard. Uh, Michael Crabtree is supposed to do better than Amari Cooper. We'll see. I don't know if Cooper can be contained to what happened last week, which, again, was a point. Uh, same with Crabtree, though. But that's, that's actually very interesting that they're – Lined up the same. Uh, Robert Woods against Randall Cobb. Uh, Gronk against Jason Witten. That's another interesting one. Uh, Carlos Hyde's supposed to lose out to Christian McCaffrey. Wow. Uh, how did Caff McCaffrey do? Uh, this last game he came out and played because Kelvin Benjamin got hurt. Wow. But... McCaffrey's going to probably continue his success. Looking at some other stuff, Titans defense is supposed to be okay, and the kickers are supposed to be his advantage again. That's interesting, but okay. But this is a very scary thing. I will admit it right now. I think it'll be – it's a very worrisome – matchup because I think John's team's got the advantage here. There's no question about it. I'm pretty sure the Byro Sports Talk <laughs> team will lose to the pit of despair dilly dilly. Yes, I, I had to do it again. <laughs> but, alright. So let's look. Um, I'm surprised at the time right now. Sorry, everyone. So, I do have two other leagues doing very well in those. Those are the NFL.com leagues, like I've stated many times before. I like to reiterate it again. The reason I am not going to talk about them on here is because I feel like they will get the coverage that they need 
And quite frankly, that's just how I feel. Mm, I guess I can leave it there. They will get the coverage they, that they all always have. Now, let's go back to, um, I guess, the topic of I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not trying to stall. I really am not. I'm trying to think of a very positive thing to end on. Let's talk about... Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm drawing a blank. I really, really am drawing a blank. Oh, I want to talk about my favorite team, the Chicago Bears, this weekend. Um, they did what they needed to do, and they beat the Steelers. Now, what was so intriguing about this? Well, the reason why I'm intrigued is because if you look at it, the Bears should be 2-0. Now, why should they be 2-0? Because their very first game, they played very well, except for drops killed them. Yeah, it happens, but you look at the stats even. Jordan Howard had the most <laughs> receptions and receiving yards. Listen, receiving yards. That's not good. Tarek Cohen also had great receiving yards. And all the Bears did was pound and pound and pound the Steelers' defense. They had a combined 220 rushing yards. That is crazy in today's NFL, and I love it. This is very Michael Madden football right now. Yes, I'm talking about me playing Madden. You run the ball a lot. You play solid, bend, don't break defense. Yes, you break a few times, but not enough to overcome. It also helped. Well, I should say what didn't help was another intercept interception for Glennon. Uh, do you view this as more, more talk for Mitchell Trubisky? I think Glennon didn't win the game. He managed the game, and that's not what we need as the Chicago Bears right now. If you look at the NFC North standings, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 1-2. Great. We're still in it. Um, with that being said, let's, a few shout-outs to Schmoogle House Productions, Atta Gaming, uh, Downtown Rams, I, Jake Ellenbogen. Got to check him out. He's on YouTube. He's on Facebook. Uh, Downtown Rams is a great read for you NFL fans. Uh, probably where you heard, uh, what's his name? Oh, I'd have to look it up though. <laughs> I think it's Cooper Cup, if I'm not, yeah, Cooper Cup. He's the one who's been just doing great for them. And quite frankly, that's exactly what I've heard from the Ram or from Downtown Rams. The other thing, Downtown Rams really got me excited about was how they projected their team. The 7-9 and nine record, uh, looking at it, they beat the Colts like they needed to. They should have beat the Redskins. It was a close loss. They did beat the 49ers, but, I mean, it shouldn't have been that close. Now they're on the road against the Cowboys, and that will be hard. That will be very hard for them, but... You know, they've played a lot of road... This is their second road game already. They're pretty balanced on how their home versus away is. It'll be intriguing. Jared Goff has been playing very well. Todd Gurley's been playing very well. Sammy Watkins balled out along with Robert Woods last week. So, you got to look at these guys. They could explode late in the year. Uh... But, again, shout-out to Downtown Rams because that's where I heard it all first. Uh, any all other things aside, I look forward to another episode next week. I enjoy doing these uh, on a consistent basis. I haven't figured out a day yet. 
we will figure that out as time moves along. As you can see, the house is still under remodel, and I will talk to you all later. Ain't no hood the same I know. The lane I travel feels alone. But I'm moving to my legs, give out. And I see my tears melt in the snow. But I don't wanna cry.